<laughs> but imagine when you are now <laughs> 35 yeah and watching this now it's documented it's there it's there man it's there What's going on everybody? Asad Hashim Ali back again with another episode of Behind the Grind. This time it's a podcast as well. Behind the Grind for all those who new, who are new over here is that podcast in which I sit with cool people who are doing cool shit on a regular basis, people whose story I admire, people whose grind I admire and people who I feel that I can constantly learn from, who um I hope everybody at home can also learn from as well. Today's guest is a very very old friend of mine since um 2006 that was the first time Excuse I met me. him. <coughs> yeah. And uh, we were not in chuddies but we were in school. We actually were in chuddies but the grade 6 was shorts. No, that we had pants. No, grade 6. You guys had to say uh shorts till grade 5. I was in that in grade 5. Sahi baat hai. But yeah, so okay. as you can already tell Ahmed <laughs> Khanani is in the house. Ahmed, what's up? All good, Asad. How's how's everything with you? Good, man. Good. I'm so glad you are here and uh I've had you on the list for a while thinking that yeah one of the days he's in Karachi I would call him and I didn't want to do this over Zoom been a while. but um introduce yourself who are you what do you do where are you from why are you sitting in my office right now well first of all I want to acknowledge that the first time that I heard you uh, say this is Asad Ashmali this is behind the grind um I was a fan of it instantly so now Stop hearing it in person it. it's actually Stop. pretty good um my name is Ahmed Kanani I live in Toronto uh I've uh, raised, been raised in Karachi Mm-hmm. for most of my life uh but for the past 7 years i have been in toronto nice what i do there now graduated live with family uh did all kinds of stuff mm-hmm. worked in uh sales jobs to uh working in corporate life to now starting my own ventures nice it's been exciting and uh for now in the last week i've been just uh just loving the karachi heat It's been yeah. a while since I took this heat in. Because you guys uh, had a bad winter this year as well. Every huh? winter is kind of bad, but luckily this winter has been pretty mild uh, in terms of the duration that's uh, lasted. Uh-huh. Uh, I haven't been to Karachi in over uh, for like the summer time, the mm-hmm. hot period time, you know, about five years. Yeah. तो दिन में तीन चार बार नहाने का मुझे शौक तो था नहीं कभी लेकिन अब करता हूँ तो काफी डिफरेंट लगता है अब शौक से करना पड़ता है अब शौक से करना पड़ता है अब मजबूरी से करना पड़ता है सही कूल मैन बट दैट इंटर इज एक्जैक्टली वाई आई कॉल यू इन इज बिकॉज यू यू बिन थ्रू अ लॉट ऑलरेडी यू एक्सपीरियंस अ लॉट एंड आई एम गेसिंग आई एम होपिंग दैट एज वी डाइव डीपर इन टू दिस एपिसोड वी विल बी अन रेवलिंग सम मिथ्स इज वेल बिकॉज देर आर मैनी there are many kids from the time when i was at cedar who still follow this as well who are yeah. either in university or in a level as well but then there's also people i know who watch this or listen to this who are older than us like in our brothers years yeah. as well and i think there's something uh, valuable in talking to you for everyone over here so um tell me about when how was it when you actually moved to canada like I still remember when we were going to university everyone was like yaar Canada jayenge party karenge Canada jayenge Toronto jayenge Toronto nahi tha Toronto 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 tha um pata chala sab Mrs Saga pahunch gaye Mrs Saga se hat bhi rahe hain kafi log ja rahe hain Brampton bahut log jaate hain Brampton yeah that's like sick area bro sick sick a lot of sikhs live there yeah so tell me about how it was when you moved there like what was so how did you what was your earliest like recollection of you in Canada overall And so I Canada's not new to me when I moved I had lived in Canada between 2000 2004 so got the passport uh, a genius move by the father of course a yeah. uh, lot of people say that of course there have been many friends who had uh, wished to have the Canadian passport back in the early days and then um, the most famous saying that I would get from most people is like tum to smart log ho na main mun log Canada chale gaye so that's also something I got that stuck with me because uh, when I came back it was more like I was I went there I was learning more the English side when I moved back in a short period of time I was like okay now I have to learn Urdu hmm. fast over 10 years later I become a complete Karachi boy and then I've seen my start in English thodi baat kar lete hain koshish karte hain matlab parda pehna dete hain apne upar but um, in 2014 uh, once I finished uh, high school yeah. from Bayview High I applied to a bunch of universities during that time frame as everyone does mm-hmm. uh it's stressful of course yeah um my last year levels wasn't that fancy i got uh, horrible grades but i still managed to get into uft pretty yeah. good school um 
I think my mom was just praying for me that I would get in some good school as compared to and my brothers. And that's exactly why you got in. No, it's not your resume. Prayers, it's, bro. It's, it's prayers. Ammi ki dua, jannat ki hawa kehte hain usko. So that's something I do fully agree with. Um, but yeah, moving to Canada in 2014 was more like, shit, I'm moving into a new phase in life. Yeah. Um, obviously leaving a whole set of friends behind. Yeah. Um, some people moving to the UK, some people moving to the US, some just staying back, more staying back. Mm-hmm. Uh, because I think... the education system here is also it has some good universities like IB alums yeah. but people do stay back and pursue education here so for me it was obviously a great opportunity it's something i feel extremely grateful uh, grateful for that i get to go to canada mm-hmm. huge change uh first uh, i remember moving to canada 3 months in advance before the university started mm-hmm. uh just to get more of the exposure thoda seekh lo ki matlab thoda kis tarah karni cheeze um but yeah all in all i would say expectations were quite varied from how i'm going to make friends mm-hmm. um you get downtown toronto mein reh ke you will see a lot of people it's going to be a huge school a huge campus uh but so many different types of people from asians to hispanics to black people to white people to pakistanis indians so many different types how are you going to gel with different personalities yeah. knowing you've only been with pakistanis for so long it wasn't that hard because the first person i saw was a mutual friend of ours in the um what we call frosh week orientation week uh-huh. ahilo sand okay turns out i spotted from this i'm like oh shit there's so many different people here i spot once one, one guy who i know that. <laughs> and that w- that hit my comfort spot the people do say when you move out and move away from the country that you have spent most of your life in mm-hmm. finding your uh, getting out of your comfort zone is key but the first thing that i saw was i found my comfort zone immediately through a mutual friend but do you think there was a culture shock when you went there or was it more like um and not a culture shock in terms of like you know western culture but because in a culture shock in the sense that like overwhelming amounts or like you know an overwhelming volume of different cultures being thrown in your face is canada is like a melting pot yeah usme i think one of the key things that you have like anyone has to keep in mind is how to converse with different people hmm now you can't offend anyone in canada that's like a, it's a very sensitive thing yeah here of course like when you're around with so many people It's really easy to offend anyone, but no one's actually going to be offended by it because, like, okay, you know what? We're just going to let it go. Hmm. Um, in Canada, however, if you say, say the slightest bit of like inconvenient thing or anything which just causes someone some kind of like shock, they will call you out for it. And having that awkward moment is something you wouldn't want to stay away from. It's happened to you. It hasn't happened with me, but it happened to a couple of my friends. You um, witnessed it. I've witnessed it live um, during Frost Week itself and Orientation Week because you meet different people, right? Um, yeah. Asians are there, so you. you know you want to be com- making people feel comfortable about what you're saying ab kuch ulta seedha bol diya to obviously phir dost nahi bante aapke and obviously you get labeled in certain ways as well because mm-hmm. you're also from a uh, pakistani who's seen so many different cultures like you see white people different girls you're like oh shit like you know baat karu se nahi karu like all those mm-hmm. things as a typical pakistani boy you see and experience that and um, gives you whole different shock as you mentioned kuch shocks yeah. kafi hote hain mm-hmm. sweet okay so but then when it comes into you being there alone also Like you, well, you were one of those people that had like family there yeah. as well, right? But um, as far as I remember, there was a brief duration, or there was like a couple of years where you were completely alone, uh, away from your family as well, because they were in another part of town, yeah. and you were away. So. Oh, that's a that's a whole different interesting part of my life where I forced my family to let me live alone because I really? felt like yeah, like I actually um, the, what happened was I had been with family for way too long. Uh-huh. Um, throughout obviously high school up until now I was there when I moved to Canada I had uh, three big guardians my brothers um yeah. in uh, different parts initially in different parts of uh, Toronto but when I moved uh, we got an apartment in downtown mm-hmm. so living not living the residence life yeah. was something I dearly like had in me that I should have had the opportunity to um up until the second third year ended uh is when my mother moved to Canada and mm-hmm. she's like uh well now you have an added set of responsibilities and mm-hmm. not just her it's also my baby sister uh-huh. so i'm a very family oriented man okay. i love my family so for me it was more like okay now i have to add this as well yeah work study sports family um a lot of things huh. fourth year came in uh family was like let's move to the suburbs we need a bigger place uh we're a big family um and i'm like okay i've never got the experience of living in residence huh. um honestly a privileged problem to have uh, yeah, that yeah. i got everything so comfortably uh that i forgot that like that really want i was craving the uncomfortableness mm-hmm. um because i think in that period is when i realized that uncomfortability is what leads leads me to success mm. or at least find out what's out there to explore um and the third year family got a house in uh, vaughan mm. um 
And I started fighting. I was like, I'm not going to move to Vaughan. It's like a 50-minute commute. I have too much stuff going on in downtown. Um, it's like saying that you are going to go to Nazareth and I'm going to go to Clifton. Basically. That's literally, the distance is, um, it, it would take about 50 minutes one way hmm. to go to university. Uh, but I didn't have any class at that time. Like I used to skip most of my morning classes. It was uh, something I just But they did. don't need to know that. Parents don't need to Parents know that. Parents need to know that. Uh, but I was working. I was working uh, 30 hours a week at that point. I was part of this, uh, the university soccer team and other extracurriculars as well. Um, of course, studying, you have to be part of it because my third, up until 30, my GP was trash. So I had to get it, pick it up so that uh, I can try to get that ideal job in some way or the other. So distractions, sorry, but for the better things. Um, mm-hmm. I managed to convince my family that uh, last year, but you could have exposure to it. Please. There was a point where he was, I, was, I was actually close to sobbing. I was like, Ami, please. And then my father finally picked it. He's like, okay, do it. Yeah. So, no, I, I told them that like, I, I'll manage everything myself. Uh-huh. Uh, pay my own rent. I was working, everything. So I think that's what convinced them. It's like, you know, he's working hard. Let's just um, give him the benefit of doubt that he's actually going to do something while he's here. Mm-hmm. Um, now, I don't know how much I did, but... No one's there to evaluate that. <laughs> you know, interestingly, I, that's something that I wish I also got exposed to. Yeah. Like the the, the 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 struggles and the problems that I had to deal with while I was in university were very different. But, yeah. but regardless of all that shit, this is actually something that I did want to go through. But, you know, because it's a, that's actually being able to take care of yourself in the in the whole Absolutely. sense. It is. You know? And it's, it's, a, it's a lot of responsibilities on you, right? Yeah. Uh, being in comfortable places for so long and yeah. then you find yourself overwhelmed with so much stuff yeah you miss you do mess up a lot it's not that you are very perfect I am mean, so um, self-sufficient I can go to the gym I can go to the job I can go to the job but you'll mess up so much yeah. because you'll get exhausted you'll get tired you can't make food because you, you're living in Canada you can't like afford meat you you're not going to be going around and picking up food all the time because you're on a student budget as well yeah so a lot of struggles And I think everyone should go through it because yeah. it actually um, humanizes you and makes you learn um, a lot of things up to an extent that what, how am I going to manage myself in the future? Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah. All right. Interesting. So, so when you were there and you, when you got there, tell me about the Ahmed Khanani of 2014 yeah. to 2018. What were the goals then versus what are they now? How do you feel that you've transitioned over those, over the past seven years? Also, the first goal was to get into a good university. I thought you were going to say Shadi Gandhi. No, that's the goal of 2022-23. You were going to do this episode again. We'll do this episode again. You saw the video. <laughs> <laughs> um, the 2014 Ahmed had some goals, which were mainly towards like, I want to be something. Like, you know, just um, maybe become kuch something. As, kuch, not something too big. Hmm. It was more like, yeah, I just have some, some passions, right? You have those dreams when you... are growing up which initially was to become a football player and then um, obviously that didn't work out um, mm-hmm. when I told my father at the age of uh, I think 12 or 13 that now I'm going to UK please there are academies I think my game is good and I can go something can happen I said stop what are you doing I'm going to study what are you doing I'm going to study what are you doing I'm going to study like you know just like you know just like you know just focus on this which is which is good like you know he, my dad's from a very different background yeah um He was trying to humanize me, that, look, look, you can do it like this. Now, he didn't see my game, football, so I can't really argue with that. Um, he was proud of me, though, about how I played, uh, as he mentioned. But 2014, Ahmed was more like transitioning from the sports uh, dreams to yeah. now moving into like, okay, now I'm moving to Canada. Um, there are a lot of good jobs there. My brothers are there who were doing jobs. Uh-huh. Um, and I just wanted to do something similar because it's always been like, four brothers, Chauta bhi kya karega? Like, you know, one, two, three, they're all doing something. So what's, what's, what are you going to do? So what's on your plate? Expectations. Always, always. Um, from, I think, middle school to high school to university. But do you think been. this was like, like some kind of imposter syndrome or was this overt expectations? Um, oftentimes, I would say there are over expectations. Huh. Um, I did feel a lot of imposter syndrome throughout my life. Yeah. Because um, there are certain things expected from you. Hmm. And you try to pull it off, hmm. but you know you're half-assing it in the process. And other people would just think that um, it's, it's great. Like, you know, oh my God, look at you. Um, but inside you would know that 
let it be, let it just slide away. Yeah. Like, you know, maybe just let them think of this and it's just going to help you move away, like transition to the next phase. Yeah. Um, so I felt that. Um, the expectations part is always has always been with me. Huh. Um, and so it's something which I took it upon myself. Like if I had, I would say the right senses back then, hmm. I would uh, tell the inner child, as they call it, that ignore it. Like, you know, mm. like there's no point of being in that race of do what he's doing, do what she's doing. Like, just try to match that or go beyond that. Because honestly, everyone's made of different skins. Um, I've I've faced that throughout my last six years, I would say. And up until recently is when I realized, Kiar, I should start talking to my inner child more. Don't worry, don't, don't be stressed all the time. Um, and it's even till the... Till the 2018 graduating Emma, the way it was like so uncertain. Like I was supposed to s- smash my GPA. Like, you yeah. know, I was, I was supposed to get like 3.8, 3.9. I end up with a pretty bad GPA, which I don't, I'm not, I would say ashamed of telling people, but it was 2.6, mm-hmm. which is pretty bad to get a job in any like good place. Uh, but I've had my ways in getting jobs. Uh, some, I would say very cunning ways. Uh, where, and I still managed to work at um, in two corporate jobs. Uh-huh. But during that time between graduation and getting that first job, it was a struggle yeah. because you are assessing your self-worth. I didn't study anything. I didn't apply to any because I didn't apply to any rejections. So what is exactly my self-worth? Like how do I actually evaluate my own achievements so far? Mm-hmm. And that's one of the biggest problems that I think most university kids would face. Mm-hmm. Here, uh, the expectations are there, but the actual result you oftentimes won't ever man- like match it. Mm-hmm. So how do you feel after that is the biggest struggle that I went through. But you said you're like, you, you, so you mentioned that the, the elder brothers were setting a benchmark of sorts, right? Mostly, like, yeah. What were they doing? Um, honestly, from like, let's say middle school to high school, um, the, my oldest brother Bilal, he, he was in the studious one, but the middle two were, um, from scoring straight A stars to NAs to like becoming the head boy and, student of the year kind of person. Um, <laughs> I always had this like, yeah, what are you doing? What are you kind of thing. I went to leave in university time when I'm there, like, you know, um, their GPAs were obviously like 3.5 above and um, I was always like, just like, you know, being the turtle in the race. Um, even after the gradu- their graduation, they were in high profile jobs, internships, part of that as well. Um, with my shitty GP, I still managed to get some decent internships. Um, and, uh, I think that led me to some kind of success in evaluating my self-worth better. Okay. I managed to get this tech internship at, uh, through university. So maybe that's something cool. That's something he didn't do. So maybe I can take that as a, as like a way to find something different. I wanted to be different. Mm-hmm. I didn't want to be like them. So, and I'm glad but this I- was your way of charting out your own path. Basically. And yeah. You mentioned also that the, you you got those internships in cunning ways. What were yeah. those ways? Honestly, like uh, one of the one of the biggest internships that I felt that I got was this uh, bank job hmm. um, at uh, BMO. Um, I remember BMO. When I, yeah, it's called Bank of Montreal. Hmm. Um, it's the acronym, like the what do you call them? The initials are BMO. Hmm. It's Banca de Montreal, which is I pronounced it really badly, but um, it's French. It's French. <laughs> Um, but yeah, like, uh, Bank of Montreal's, uh, internship was, um, available. It actually wasn't even an internship. They were just hiring, um, a contract on a contract basis. Um, uh-huh. I remember like just utilizing networks from then and then onwards. Um, one of the biggest things that I've learned is, uh, your network is your net worth kind of thing. Right. And mm. I think that quote always resonates with me that, um, I've always been a very social person. Yeah. Um, and I felt that the people around me are like the people who are going to elevate me to certain extents. Mm-hmm. Like I obviously have to cultivate that myself. Mm-hmm. It's not that they're going to be like holding my hand throughout the journey, but I have to like take them as an opportunity, like be with them as an, uh, and take that as an opportunity to take the next step mm-hmm. and see what opportunities they can create for me. Mm-hmm. And likewise, I can for them. Um, I, of course, having brothers in the city allows me to spread my network even more mm-hmm. because then you meet people who are even... You tapped into their pool. You ta- yeah, so like you tap into their networks, mm-hmm. um, start messaging them on Facebook, mm-hmm. keep it extremely personal, like, you know, send them a friend request. Oh, I, I met you at cricket. Like, you know, my brother were playing at Ramzan night cricket, which is a scene in Toronto, you know, there are a lot of these here. So yeah. you have all these mixed gatherings at uh, Ramzan nights and other events. Mm-hmm. Um, so I met a lot of people through that. And honestly, the... If you speak right and if you speak honestly and genuinely to them, mm-hmm. 
people will be there to help you. Yeah. And uh, one of the people who was even my brother's senior from U of T, mm -hmm. um, I, he remembered me, like he added me back on Facebook and he said, man, your football game was pretty awesome. So yeah, like tell me how I can help. I was like, you have, um, you're working at a BMO. I feel like there's a contract job. I don't know if I'm qualified for it. He's like, don't worry, let me speak to the manager. Uh -huh. uh, he was a senior consultant there or something. I uh, forgot exactly what his title was because he quit four months when I got in. Oh, okay. um, but uh, man, he got me the job. He got me the job uh, as, um, a, as an analyst at uh, BMO, which to me, with the GPA that I had, which they didn't even ask big for. Big win. It's a big win. Yeah. Um, I was getting paid a good amount of money yeah. uh, for, um, for my service there. Um, I was told to, that I was going to be at this place for about four to six months. Uh -huh. uh, and after that, it's going to be over. Um, so the summer went by great. Mm -hmm. Earned a decent amount of money. I spent a lot of money. I decided like, you know, these are the goals that I'm going to set for myself. Yeah. I'm going to travel here. I'm going to do this. And to me, the third year, Emmett, who felt really underachieved at that point because of academics and um, just like generally how life was going because before that I was just doing retail jobs. Mm -hmm. I did... Um, but you were at Aldo or something, huh? Yeah. I, 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 I bounced out on a lot of uh, retail jobs. So I remember like just because of my curiosity to know and like op openest experiences, I would say, mm -hmm. um, I always applied to a lot of jobs. Hmm. Um, the, the shittiest ones as well. Hmm. My first ever job was, um, uh, my friend um, helped me get it. It was for this remote internship out of um, California. Hmm. Uh, something cool to start off with, I guess, my career, uh, which hmm. is called Course Hero. It's like an online platform where you upload documents mm -hmm. and um, students can access that. You, you as a student can upload documents and other students can access those documents, which would be part of the university curriculum. So just supplement uh, your studying. Um, I was like their business development representative, which as a first year, second year student was like pretty fancy. I was like, I have an internship with a tech, tech company, like, you know, crazy. Um, that obviously wasn't the mm. most fanciest experience. It was but something. But you were comfortable by picking up, like by going into the dirt also. Like there was, there was no job that was out of bounds. Or yeah, like no job like that. And to be honest, like I've, I've done some really like low end jobs as well. I remember like, um, this which one is job. a problem here. It's not a problem over there. Yeah. Like honestly, like if, and I don't blame anyone here because even I was in that mentality for a long period of time. Mm. Uh, like if someone told me, Ki bhai tum first, second year student, tum ja ke McDonald's mein kaam karo. Mm. like I wouldn't do it. Mm. The old Emmett says, no, like, you know, if today someone asked me and a kid comes to me, he's like, what should I do? I was like, just get the, whatever job you can. Just go to McDonald's. Just go, whatever you can. Mm. Um, it's harsh to be in this environment and do it mm. because it's just not the best pay. It's not the best standards. But it's the reality. Of it's things. the reality because yeah. if up until you don't step out of your comfort zone, you might not actually grow. Mm. Um, I remember my second job was to go around selling knives. <laughs> like, really? Yeah, it was just like, like door to door. Door to door salesman. A lot of my friends have done it and mm. I really commend on a lot of Pakistani guys who came to Toronto and did that as well. Uh, a mutual friend of ours has done it as well. It's like, it's, it's really good to see them step out of their comfort zone mm. to just make a buck, yeah. um, which is just for themselves. Like, you know, just to spend money for themselves, mm. um, so that they can not feel as bad when the dad sends the paycheck, yeah. uh, not the paycheck, sorry, like just like your monthly allowances. Mm. Um, so yeah, like the second job was selling, uh, door door knives. Um, mm. they're pretty cool knives. I did not bring any home, unfortunately, <laughs> because I quit after my second day because I was like, okay, I tried this, it's not for me. Maybe this door-to-door -door stuff is not for me because I just don't like the feeling of rejection every time. Huh. Cause I didn't sell a single knife in the two days that I was there. Um, rejection, of course, um, no one likes it. Mm -hmm. um, and to train yourself to be op like accepting of rejection yeah. is difficult. And that allowed me to just learn that I'm actually a very sensitive person mm -hmm. that if anyone rejects me, I'll probably like be shattered. Yeah. Um, it took me a while up until let's say my final entrepreneurship journey started after quitting my job in 2020 mm -hmm. was when I saw like slowly understood that, you know what? Rejections are great. That yeah. should teach you how to improve yourself, how to tailor your approach to different things. Yeah. So yeah. Um, but before we get into 2020, yeah. when you started you, be, right before you left, what was that job that you left in 2020? In 2020, yeah. it was Deloitte. Uh, it was, Deloitte, was a right? consultant at Deloitte. Yeah. And this started right after graduating? Um, de, um, I was continuing my BMO job mm. uh, post-graduation because I, as I mentioned, the four to six month contract that I had, they extended to me part-time throughout my university. Mm. So working at a corporate office in a bank part-time throughout your fourth year was like a blessing because that allowed me to pay my own rent, mm. allowed me to pay all my expenses. My dad didn't have to cover me for anything other than like the final tuition year. Um, and I think 
for me, that allowed me to generate like the savings that I needed mm -hmm. to then figure out what exactly is my dream job. And at that point, consulting was like something of a buzzword that I was like, you know what, that's super fancy. Like, you know, yeah. they travel, they eat meals, they, um, they do all sorts of cool shit. Yeah. Um, what like, and little did I know that, uh, fast forward, like, you know, what exactly it was, which we'll get into later. Um, but yeah, like quitting, uh, BMO was also in, um, in hindsight a great decision mm -hmm. because, um, I didn't have a job lined up. Mm. I, I was like, you know what, this has been a while. It's I've been too comfortable here. Uh, even my manager who, um, luckily for me was a Pakistani guy. Um, Fezan, he's a great person. He offered me a lot of like free holidays as well. Something a bank would never let do, <laughs> but, uh, very, very nice guy, uh, to give me a good schedule, uh, for a student to work alongside with, um, uh, all the, all the studies that he has to do. Uh -huh. Quitting that in, uh, right after graduation, because, uh, sorry, a couple of months after graduation, because I wasn't able to find the right job. People usually have jobs lined up prior to like their graduation month. Yeah. yeah. I had this job, but it was not the ideal job. Hmm. It was just like sitting at a desk and uh, working in fraud and risk where people are just like filing their credit card reports that, hey, I someone committed fraud. Mm -hmm. uh, my debit card has been stolen and here like list of 20 transactions that I came across. Mm -hmm. So working with the electronic, the credit card and the analytics team to figure out like, and why is this trend happening? Mm -hmm. Sounds interesting at first, but when you're like, I think 18 months into it, you're like, what is this? Like, you know, this, is yeah. this my life for the rest of the couple of years? Um, yeah. Cause I want to do something interesting. I want something cool, like something which many people don't do. That's how I always wanted to be something, someone different. Huh. Uh, so I quit told my manager, like, you know what, this is not for me. And he, he patted my back. He's like, man, I couldn't be happier for you. <laughs> so I think his blessing and his like encouragement to be able to go beyond. It was a boost. It was a boost. I was like, okay, you know what? This guy doesn't want me here either. Like, uh, what am I doing here? If he doesn't want me, he's like, well, you are, you're not meant for this. Hmm. That's what he told me. And like, those words were like very golden for me. He's like, yeah, actually, I actually am not meant for this. Someone's echoing that for me. So like, yeah. let's just listen to that and move forward. Mm -hmm. um, and I did, I moved forward. I didn't have a job for about two months yeah. to which then my brother was like, you know what? Uh, my company is hiring hmm. for a very shitty position. <laughs> Do you want it? I was like, this is say consultant. <laughs> no, it actually was horrible. Um, but, um, I still took it uh -huh. for one specific reason. I was like, man, I can't be out of a job. Uh -huh. Like, what am I going to say to myself? You're not doing this. You're not doing something. Yeah. And I've always been that person who's like, kuch na kuch karna padega, yeah, karna yeah, padega. Yeah. like this mind's buzzing with ideas. This mind's buzzing with like, you have to prove yourself. Mm -hmm. And, um, I think it just put me in wrong positions many times. I'm sorry cutting you off there, but then did you ever, what did you do or how do you feel now about like calming yourself down? I understand that you yeah. always have to be doing something like yeah. you should not stop. Calm rukna nahi chahi ya khat nahi rukna chahi kisi se. Yeah. But that can also end up like killing you softly. Yes. You know, like it's like a, it can bite you in the ass as well. That's what people call ass, burnout. Man. Not just the ass. Yeah. Everywhere. 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 It's like, for, and first and foremost, I think it bites your brain way too much, which yeah. exhausts you. So your creativity burns out because you're actually on the back of your mind. You're like, you know what? Now that I'm out of a job, mm -hmm. I'll be more creative. I'll try to find more avenues like to do something. But because I've always been a person who's always doing something, that mm -hmm. break seemed like a crime. Mm -hmm. It's like, take the job, because big companies don't hire me. Like, you know, mm -hmm. the consulting gigs. So I took up that job. Um, I felt that it was a job which probably was the worst job I did because it was simple, simple stuff. Mm -hmm. Like more something like, hey, just make sure that this, uh, this Excel sheet just has the right numbers or just like put this data into this sheet kind of thing. Just like three weeks in, Having my brother there as well, someone who gave me moral support kind of thing is like, it's so that, so that, so but I was like, screw it. Like, you know, no. even this is not for me. Uh. Went into the HR room. I was like, listen, I have to quit. Like <laughs> brother relationship aside, like I need to get out of this place. So I'm sorry. Like I'll, yeah. I'll be, I'll be not coming tomorrow for my shift. Um, uh, her name was Sheila. She was actually surprised herself. She's like, Abhi teen hafte hoi, bita matlab. where are you going? Um, like, you know, I'm just going to figure it out. Yeah. Uh, during that time frame is when, uh, this entire like stress and anxiety kicked in saying that, like, you know what? Abhi nahi to kabhi nahi. Like, you know, mm. abhi karna padega. Like I said, like mm. this is the time to figure it out. Otherwise you're always going to be labeled as the loser or the tail end of the brothers. who's like, <laughs> nikamma, yeah. kind of thing. So all in all, 
um, this cunning thing came up again where like, you know, tap it in that work. Hmm. Uh, one of my best friends in Canada, Ali, um, he actually um, is a huge supporter for me. Like um, he's always been the person who's like, who talks great about me, thinking hmm. that he thinks I have this entrepreneurial drive. He thinks I have this edge, the way I talk, the way I do things. He's like, you have something. I don't know what's, there's something about you that I love and I learn from. Hmm. Um, and he helps me a lot. And hmm. of course, like, there's no, uh, it, doesn't, it goes without saying that I do learn a lot from him as well. Mm -hmm. um, he was at, he got a great job at this uh, uh, large company, but he always had that drive, like, you know, what's, what else is out there? And yeah. I always learned that from him. He ended up going to this, um, con not conference, I would say, but this networking session at Deloitte in their mm -hmm. uh, corporate office downtown. Um, and uh, I, he called me up because we were supposed to meet that evening. He's like, Bro, I'm sorry we have to bail on that, but I would have something. I have a better proposal for you. How about we meet at the Deloitte office? There's a event come uh, happening here. You should come. Hmm. I'm like, man, I'm done with this garbage stuff. Uh -huh. Like this corporate world doesn't want me. Uh, I think I have to. Do you something. had given up at that time. I almost given up, but something within me said, like, you know, Ahmed, Ali is calling you. Just go. Ali is a Moroccan guy, so he pronounced as Ali. Um, so I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna go. Screw it. Um, I trust the guy. He wants to meet up as well later anyway, so it's worth it. Mm -hmm. um, I go to Deloitte's office. Um, they obviously ID me in the main floor. There's like, sir, what's your name? Um, it's like Ahmed. Uh, he's like, oh, your name's not on the invite list. And I was like, you know what? I was about to call Ali. Where I was like, um, oh, I forgot to sign up. I'm from BMO. And mind you, I had quit my job. I just told them like, I'm from BMO uh, mm -hmm. from, um, uh, from their uh, fraud and risk department. Uh, they're like, oh, cool, nice, nice. Like, they just gave me a new card. Like, okay, you know what? That's fine. You can go. <clears throat> Probably forgot to register. Uh, now, an unemployed dude just walking into Deloitte saying that I'm heavily employed by a big organization as well. Uh -huh. Take me upstairs. I go upstairs. I see Ali uh, mingling out with a bunch of people. Obviously, Keener is there because everyone wants a job there. Yeah. Ali already has a job, but what a guy. Like, he's just trying to see what else, what else is out there. So, that uh -huh. drive obviously gets me, gets me moving every time as yeah, well. Yeah. I see people doing a lot of small talk with managers. Um, of course, it's like hire me, hire me. Like I have, the, I, I did this in university. I I'm studying computer science. I'm doing engineering. So they were mostly engineers. Mm -hmm. Turns out the managers are also all engineered backgrounds. And here I am, an economics graduate, talking about oh, right. this building is very nice. <laughs> <laughs> so that that was literally me. So you can't engineer me. Huh? Uh -huh. You can't engineer me. It was literally that. Like I, it was an event for systems engineering practice at Deloitte. Um, so all in all, like I was not a fit for it. Um, I, there's a manager next to me, um, the great guy, uh, he, he starts talking to me, he's Indian. So I guess I have some, like some stuff to talk to him about. Um, we shake hands, we say each other's names. And as soon as he says his name, um, I, I was like, oh, you're Indian just to break the ice. Like, you know, oh, Indians, like, you know, neighbors kind of thing. So bye -bye. yeah, bye bye. So you obviously have conversations which are more relatable than no small talk happens because you actually know what you can, what you need to say to these yeah. people. Um, so one similar interest came about, which was uh, football as they call it soccer in Canada. So we started talking about football. He supported Chelsea, I support United. Um, so obviously something that also allows us to not just share love, but also hate. Mm. So it's a good mix and balance there. Um, and, uh, there is this partner. So partner is the high level exec there at Deloitte. Um, he's carrying out a black book, a small mm -hmm. black book. And Ali, when I met him in the event, he's like, bro, listen, there's this guy who's going out the small book in his hand. If he writes your name there, you're guaranteed an interview. So that was my end goal. That was like, Ye mujhe karna hai aaj. Uh -huh. so as I was speaking to all those students there who were like, who I thought were all, maybe could be managers, but some weren't. So as I was doing all those small talk, I met the manager, spoke to him for a bit. He, he gave me his business card. He's like, you should email me. Like, you know, we'll grab a coffee sometime. Mm -hmm. So I was like, great, but he's not my end goal. My end goal is that partner. I have to get in that black book. The black book sounds like a very like sketchy book. You can ask me, Concept Financial Secrets. It was just a bunch of names that he's taking yeah. down, right? Um, and uh, okay, I make my move. I see him towards the bar. Like he's finally, uh, He's finally alone. He's like, I'm supposed to hunt him down now. Yeah. Uh, I walk towards the bar. Sober guy, doesn't drink. Um, me, of course. Uh, the guy was drinking his, his ass off at that point because it, obviously it's his event. It's like on, on, on the house. Um, he's a little tipsy. Uh -huh. uh, I say, hey, Anthony, heard uh, great things about you. Like, you know, like I've, I've seen like everyone's just uh, talking to you. You could be the person who is like the light of the room. So I'd like to learn more about sh what you do. So, like, oh yeah, he's like, I, like I'm a partner at Deloitte and stuff like that. He's a very, very obnoxious personality, but yeah. what a solid, solid guy. 
Like he is uh, someone who has a lot of flair uh-huh. and drive towards like achieving big things. Um, ten seconds into the conversation, he's like, "Why does your name tag? Why is your name tag in like a marker? Like why isn't it handwriting? It's supposed mm-hmm. to be official." And um, I obviously shut up for a second. I was like, "Ah, uh, um, I uh, that's that's exactly what I was doing." And then he calls over his senior manager. He's like, "Hey, come here, come here, come here. This guy, this guy sneaked into the event." <laughs> and literally, he, they're both calling me up for sneaking into the event. Like, a, a huge multinational company is telling me that you sneaked into our event. How could you? Um, so the, they they were laughing about it. Yeah. And I and I the only thing that I said to him at that point um, was uh, in a very nervous way. I was like. A man's got to do what he's got to do. <laughs> like, you know, that was that's my, exactly what took the cake then. Huh? That, 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 that helped because yeah. um, he remembered my face. Huh. But do you remember the end goal? The black book. The black book. I did not make another black book. Oh, no. So a bummer night. Um, but um, I think the key takeaway from that was that shit. I, I put myself in a very, very weird situation yeah. with a person who I was like, I admire to work with. You know, that's something I want to do. Um, and you also had nothing to lose. Yeah, thakara me ghar gaya Ali se milke, and turns out me and Ali didn't even go for dinner because he's like, bro, I'm sorry, like I, some other day. Huh. Like it's been a long night. Ghar uh, gaya, I was like, you know, what? bummed out. This is bullshit. Like huh. again, this happened. Um, I still emailed uh, the manager who gave me his uh, contact card. Uh-huh. Next weekend, he calls me to uh, the cafeteria uh, where uh, at the office. Speak to him for a bit. Uh, he's an engineer. He's an engineer as well. So he asked mm-hmm. me like, Why, "What were you doing at the event?" Um, I sort of tell him, "I'm a keener. I want to learn. Um, I have done tech internships, which allow me to like, I guess, understand divert my mind, least, understand yeah. more like what's happening in today's world, mm-hmm. and advance myself in that area." Right. Mm-hmm. Um, although, like that 20-30 minute conversation I had with him was, I think, fruitful enough for him to then. Uh, Tell me, send me a resume. Just sort of like, he's like, I can't guarantee anything, but just send me a resume. I'm interested to see what else you have. Uh-huh. Uh, send the resume to him. Um, I didn't hear back from him for two weeks. Hmm. Two weeks, I was like, you know what? December's okay. here. Uh-huh. 2018's about to close. It's been six months since I've graduated. Yeah. I haven't found the job that I wanted. What the hell am I? Like, what's my what's my worth now? Like, you know, yeah. am I just supposed to go on the weekends, play football, come back and do some part time sales job? What am I supposed to do right now? Because uh, the world thinks I have done some significantly great things hmm. because I'm obviously in the league of my brothers. So it's like expectations, expectations thi, right? So obviously it damages you on the inside. Mm-hmm. But to my surprise, I managed to get a call back from three other companies mm-hmm. in that one week where I was like despaired. I was like, life is just like done. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, I'm being too serious about this stuff, but it was like it felt a little it catastrophic was real, at that yeah. point. Um, I got a call back from two other places. Uh, at that point, not Deloitte. Mm-hmm. I got these um, two companies which reached out. One was Microsoft, surprisingly, and the other one was um, Ceridian. So these two companies uh, are. What got do they do? Uh, they're also a uh, software implementation company. Okay. So they have consultants as well, who, mm-hmm. which most of the companies do now, software implementation, right? Yeah. So you put a bunch of uh, finance or other business graduates uh, who then start working with tech people mm. uh, to become more smarter. That's what we do now. <laughs> um, so all in all, we, I got those calls, sorry. I got those calls. Um, I scheduled the interviews. I went to Ceridian, third round, final round. Um, I lost to a software engineer. On my way back home, I got a random call. Um, the call was from a uh, hiring manager at Deloitte. She called me up. She's like, "Hey, this is me. Like, I'm uh, I'm calling regards to like um, letting you know that you are invited for an interview. Uh, no email, nothing. Just a direct call." Yeah. I was like, "Interesting. Like, you know, but guess what, Emma? You're gonna have to go through another three rounds of interviews, and you're probably gonna fail that because you're a stupid piece of shit." <laughs> um, that's how exactly I felt. But then uh, I asked her, I was like, okay, um, yeah, I'm available for Thursday. Um, can you just confirm who this interview is with? And she mentions the name of the partner. And I was surprised. I was like, okay, the partner. It's like, yes. Black um, book partner. Sorry? The black book partner. The black book partner. Crazy, nice. right? How life turns out to be. Like, yeah. I got the call. I was scared. I was like, you know what? Those three rounds coming again. I'm going to fail. And then shit, she says Anthony. And I was like, oh my God, that's the same partner. And I confirmed from her, listen, are there any other rounds or is this the only round I'm having? She's like, this is the only interview you're going to be having. Uh, so just be prepared. Damn. I freaked out again. I was like, yeah, he comes up. Like, you know, 
do I deserve this? Do I deserve this opportunity now? Yeah. Um, I started obviously questioning more than obviously answering because I was like, ab, ab kya munse? like what am I going to say? If he yeah. asked me like, why are you not an engineer? Why are you not a comp sci background? Mm-hmm. Um, I took some help from uh, some engineer friends of mine. What should I say? What should I not say in these interviews? Some people who worked at these big companies, um, they helped me find out the answers, right? I wrote them down all night uh, just to make sure that I don't mess up any like tech words or any buzzwords. Go to the interview and uh, the partner was there. Hmm. On the way, um, sorry, on the way I was quite nervous. And when I got there, I was like, you know what? Good practice to do is feed a homeless person, you know? Dua milegi. Yeah. If you're a homeless person, and then uh, outside of McDonald's, go to the office. Uh, go to the office, same place that uh, the manager spoke to me. I was at the um, cafeteria, mm-hmm. very informal. I thought I was going to be like in a room, professional. Mm-hmm. But of course, as I mentioned, the flary partner, mm-hmm. he has his own ways of doing things. Puts you in a spot where you don't think you would be. Yeah. Be in a cafeteria around hundreds of people. It's loud. Present me yourself. Wow. Right. So that's something I always want to do. I present myself as best as I can. Wherever I am, I just want to be like, just that I have to be at my best yeah. because that's my image. That's what's going to get me some places, right? Um, so I think I struck the right chord. Uh, the interview, uh, which was supposed to be like probably an hour maybe, mm-hmm. turned out to be about 12, 13 minutes. Mm. Uh, he asked me a bunch of interesting questions like, what do you do? What have you done in life before? Like, you know, have you done anything, anything interesting? Mm-hmm. So obviously like there are some interesting ones. I've, I've sold knives. Uh, yeah. I didn't sell any, but I just realized that I've had a lot of rejection in life. I've done tech internships. I got a job at BMO. I, he didn't ask me about my GPA again, luckily. Yeah. Because if he did, he probably would have told me like, get out of here. Yeah. Uh, because it's known would that, that have mattered. I think it, it does because if you apply traditionally, that's one thing that I've been extremely vocal about to all university kids. Like, do not, do not be like, like I would say, um, be don't mess up bummed you, yeah. by getting rejections after three weeks from those email uh, auto replies that thank you for your applying to this job. Uh, we are sorry to inform you that you have not. Blah, 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 blah. But yeah, that. please stay tuned for more updates and new jobs coming out. I'm like yeah. those emails are. They're awful because they hurt. <laughs> yeah, they hurt because they're rejections, right? And yeah, we're not yeah, really yeah. used to rejections because in today's world, it's like, jo yeah. like I want a fuck, I want a burger. Like I'll order a burger. No one can stop me from ordering a burger. If yeah. I want to delete a post that I posted, no one's going to notice. Like I'm just going to delete it. Like, you know, whatever. Mm. So we're like an on demand thing, whatever you want is in an instant. So rejection mm. is something we're not really used to. Mm. So getting those emails is obviously very harsh. Most students get really like, disheartened by those uh, emails mm-hmm. and I had them as well. I had a lot of them mm-hmm. because as I mentioned, six months of not getting the jobs, it's like, it's hard. Yeah. Um, but, and the like, interview with Deloitte, it, um, it was just very short. Mm-hmm. He said, we were already done hiring. Mm-hmm. He literally phrased that to his day. He's like, we're done hiring, but you're interesting. <laughs> he said, you're interesting. So let me see what I can do. Uh, he's like, stay tuned. Um, I'll get back to you. These, that's it. I'm just like confused. I'm like, was it supposed to be this short? <laughs> um, I go home um, and wait anxiously for, uh, it was a Friday, right? So yeah. now, unfortunately, I have to wait the weekend. The weekend. Yeah. A weekend which, which can't be nice because I'm so tensed. Yeah. Um, he didn't get back to me up until Wednesday. Mm. So this is like 27th December. Mm. People are on vacation. People are trying to enjoy themselves. Like, you know, ki baat nahi karni and I'm here trying to get calm. Mm-hmm. So eventually, Wednesday call I and, and uh, I got the job. I was blown away by it because it's the same company that my brothers have worked at. They weren't working there when I got the job. Huh. Uh, but it was like, I met the expectation. It's like, holy shit, I, I cracked the code. I was like, Babu ban gaya I was, exactly. <laughs> I was like, man, I was supposed to be here earlier. Like that was the goal in 2014, right? Get yeah. the job at this company. Like, you yeah. know, this is the, this is the ideal thing. Like, you know, if you get it, then it's set. Then, you get it. 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 Yeah. I have documented myself as well. You have, it, right? So I, I do document my life huh. on, a, on a document. So I, I keep everything in track. Okay, what's going on? I mean, I've never done anything in my life. I've never done anything in my life. I've never done anything in my life. I mean, grandchildren should know what I've done in life, right? 
बाबू बन गया कंसल्टेंट basically man and it felt like a dream it was for how long it was for like 2 years almost 2 years almost 2 yeah. years and now you are not just uh, a part of you didn't just start off your own um startup yeah you're also working with the fam yeah so tell me about that tell me about empowered first tell me about empowered then we're going to kanai developments honestly like um empowered is just um a venture based out of experience It's literally that. You know what they say, right? Uh, when you're trying to so- solve a problem this world is having, you're supposed to be part of it mm-hmm. in a way so that you can at, at least like know how to solve it. Yeah. Um, when I quit my, prior to quitting my job, I would say a year into the job, I felt like it wasn't the ideal job that I wanted. What you wanted, you got, yet it wasn't it. It's always been that. I got to university. I was like, I got to the U, U of T. I was like, yeah, this is university. Yeah. You're into. I was like, man, it's not yeah, that great. Yeah, more interesting. Yeah. I got into, uh, let's say, a job, like a sales job. I was like, oh, job, it's not that good. It's not that good. Um, I, I'm starting making money. I was like, man, making money and then spending that is super tough. Like, you know. Yeah. And then again, like getting that BMO job, great bank job. But then it's not the same. Same thing happened with my last final corporate job. I was mm. like, yeah, this was like the dream of dreams. Like, you know, yeah, I was like, yeah, and how is it not fulfilling anymore? Yeah. If six months in, I felt that I was like, man, I I think I'm not made for this. Like <laughs> again, that question sparked up, right? Um, I think when the pandemic hit, prior to that, the last two months before, like I would say, the start of 2020, 2020, hmm. is when I started like noticing changes in my habits. Hmm. Um, now I was doing a, a job which required you do more hours than the usual nine to five, because hmm. that's what is expected. and then i was also a person who wanted to have a life outside of work mm-hmm. now having a job which is extremely demanding it's hard to keep a life outside of that yeah. especially when the people around you are also in the same grind so yeah. if they're doing it you're supposed to do it as well mm-hmm. it's expectations again um i was commuting every day which means that for me it's more like that 50 minutes of train ride each way mm-hmm. is like how do i make it productive i'm like in this like zone of trying to find productivity everywhere hmm. right ki matlab it's like there's this race going on all the time yeah uh ki bhai kuch karna hai kuch karna hai kuch karna hai you have to do something stay busy stay active stay productive hmm. um trying to find like podcast to listen to and obviously that's when i was hearing your podcast as well asad thank you very much in my next commute i might hear this one um but uh, i was just all the like, way back home <laughs> all the way back home all the way back home uh but i was listening to podcasts uh read, reading books became a good habit in uh, on the train huh. but it still didn't feel like i was doing something yeah like all that productivity was slowly making me unproductive it was like mai itna kuch kar to raha hu but it's not really making me move forward like yeah. i'm not happy at the job i don't like the commute mm. i don't like it that i my weekends are just planned but nothing goes according to plan mm. it's like i'm going to do this on the weekend i'm going to do that on the weekend it's more like yaar subah ko 11 baje uthke because i'm like recovering from sleep mm. uh fatigue uh sleep deficiency sorry um nothing on the weekends hmm. it goes by because i'm also living with family so it's like came bahar chale gaye like friends are out of the picture now so like my social life is decreasing now being a social person hmm. now your social life decreases as well like how do you actually like cope up with that hmm. the job still demanding hate the project that i'm working on hmm. need to transfer it not happening because the project's at a very critical stage it's like too much going on mm-hmm. the perks were there you get to travel and get to enjoy ubers lunches whatever but mm-hmm. it's just not as fulfilling mm-hmm. i was feeling very unfulfilled i would say being in moments of rut mm. and you asking me about empowered is exactly that rut that i was trying to solve mm. it's like what is it that keeps telling pushing me back into that rabbit hole like is that my queue bar bar snake jata hu like why am i this productive beast person who's always on his tippy toes that always doing shit but realistically everyone thinks that i'm being productive but i'm actually so unproductive and so fatigued and so stressed all the time hmm. 
So that rut is what made me figure out what are the small solutions that I can bring into my life. Hmm. So rather than reading books on the train back and forth, hmm. I was like, you know what, let's just give my grandmother a call because, you know, older, older people have been through life. Yeah. So hearing their calmness, I to sit that's pretty relaxing. Like, you know, she's just chilling. Like I'm here buzzing my life off. Like, and like my grandma's just chilling. So it started becoming a habit that I was like, you know what, let's call someone on the way back rather than just like thinking like, I have to be productive on the way back. Mm. Similarly, I was like, you know, what's one thing, what's a song? Songs obviously play a huge part. They, it's heavily researched that songs push you to limits. The reason why you listen to songs at the gym is because it elevates you, it like yeah. pushes you harder. Similarly, when you, you listen to Ajit Singh when you're heartbroken, right? Yeah. So it's like all those things happen, right? So it, cause it elevates the mood. I'm more of a Justin Bieber guy. Justin Bieber guy? But Okay. Ajit Singh, yeah, if I'm feeling Bollywood. Um, I'm honestly like, and if you're missing someone, you listen to uh, what's his name? Um, James Blunt. Right, if you're missing yeah. someone, yeah. So like, there are a lot of there are a lot of different, uh, I guess, categories you can resort to if you want to feel something and ele- and accelerate that feeling. Yeah, yeah. My go-to song to push me to the limits is Titanium. David Guetta. Yeah. And so see, so, yeah, like the beat initially allows me to like you know just like holy shit, like it's like it's gonna put me in a Zen mode. Like I'm I'm like. This is the bliss that I want. And whatever's in front of me, I'm going to cross it. Sweet. So on my way back, if I'm ever feeling down and I have to hit the gym after that, because like, you know, you have this routine, hmm. like auto, get ready, jump on the train, go to work, spend your unwanted hours there. Like, you know, and just stay there to like, whatever, go back home, work, um, work more, watch Netflix, maybe gym. If you can, if you have the energy to eat hmm. and then sleep. It's like this like really boring, monotonous life. Mm-hmm. Obviously, um, titanium allowed me to like push myself hard at the gym. It's like, you know what? I'll gym jana because I heard titanium. Mm-hmm. Uh, and other habits like feeding someone on the way. Mm-hmm. If someone's um, uh, hungry and you see a homeless person, just feed them a meal. It'll make you feel more, like I would say, blessed. And while you're going to work, it'll just make you feel more grateful. Like, you know what? I have money coming in. Mm-hmm. So these small habits made me feel like, you know what? These are actually making me feel better while I go to work. Mm-hmm. It didn't make the work better. It just made me feel better yeah. about going to work and getting back from it. I asked a couple of my friends, I was like, yo, what do you do? What do you do when you're feeling this rut? Mm-hmm. Someone's like, you know, I listen to house music. I just sit at home, just smoke a joint, just like bob my head. It's like the weekend goes by doing this like left, right, front, forward, whatever. Yeah. I don't do that. So like, I, that's not for me, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> um, there are friends who listen to other kinds of music, right? Um, yeah. Someone said that, like, you know, I usually um, dis, um, discharge myself from like my phone. Like I keep it completely away from me mm. at certain points in my day because it helped me keep myself away and like just focus on what I want to do. Yeah. So different habits from different personalities, different people. Mm-hmm. Like this is interesting. I can maybe work something out of it. So while I was at my job, COVID had just hit. Mm-hmm. Uh, Canada was going into lockdown. I was like, you know, this is great. Like I don't have to go to work anymore. Uh, mm-hmm. into the office physically that means all those like shitty meetings that i have to be like present in the moment for now it's all virtual no one wants the cameras to be open i can just do whatever i want now mm-hmm. so i started working on front-end designs like something mm-hmm. i just always want to do which was to create um uis and just understand ux user experiences mm-hmm. on how people re- react to different products mm-hmm. so like you know what i have an, i have an idea why are people reacting to different things? Like if I gave someone a uh, titanium listen they'd be like, no, what the hell? Like I listen to something else. Hmm. So like, that means he's a different personality than me. So let's make a business idea out of it. Let's um, use personality test and give people curated content and action items to do to get them in, out of their moments of rut. And that's how Empowered was born. Um, it turned out to be a, I would say a, an idea fancied by many of my friends. Hmm. So, which allowed me to loop in a good friend of mine, um, someone who's very like-minded, passionate uh, about uh, certain causes that I'm also passionate about. Essen, I pulled him into this uh, venture as well. Um, both him and I worked hard hmm. on making sure we pull the right tricks here. Hmm. Um, we outsourced our work to Pakistan hmm. from a remote village to help us build the application, hmm. bootstrapped it, of course. Um, felt really good that I was uh, employing someone from Kohat. Wow. Yeah. So. Uh, we really di- uh, d- dug deep to find the right resources to be able to help us build huh. what we had in mind because it, it was always been like we had countless of ideas but 
execution always was a lacking point yeah yaar kon who has the guts to finish something at least huh. like you know people have great ideas but mm. and uh, one thing we like always write down ideas so always used to write down ideas mm. but i never executed any of them because i was like yaar kiske paas time hai karne ka mm-hmm. like i the, whatever time i get let's just do something different when uh, like gym karo ye karo wo karo so we managed to do that we managed to um, get the app developed we pulled in the right team um, i posted on linkedin that like, i unpaid internship people if interested just reach I out to me i'm seeing that yeah i i got an overwhelming response and i think it was at the right time because there were students who were very scared about uh, if i'm going to get a job and mm-hmm. that was like my stage right i was yeah. like back when i was in 2018 like ke jobs milengi nahi milengi yeah. like you know people are saying this is the most like dire situation for any student to go through you're graduating in a pandemic you're not going to get a job and for me going through all those in, uh, experiences in life where i didn't even apply to those jobs and i got them hmm. the big job people dream about those jobs i still got them without even sending my resume in hmm. on the portal um i interviewed a bunch of people whoever obviously was not uh, hired hmm. i did give them like the i was there, a sweet message that i have had this experience if you need any help let me know hmm. whoever is now with me and has been working for the last 6 7 months in research a great great team of like smart uh, ladies that i have hmm. somehow research is a ladies game <laughs> um they're all so good at what they do hmm. um and now we we were coming to a stage where we have a prototype uh we are introducing the application now to several organizations across canada which is i think one thing i'd like to mention about wellness in a nutshell Hmm. It's a very broad category. Yeah. Uh people in Pakistan don't really have the full understanding of how broad wellness is because it's more something in the west mm-hmm. right now. The mental health is more um I would say more of a point of conversation to talk about. Mm-hmm. People are slowly getting more um I would say aware about it here. Mm-hmm. But it's not, it's just not as accepting as yet. It's not a mass phenomenon. Exactly. Yet. Not mm-hmm. as yet because mm-hmm. we have a lot of other strings that we pull down on us at the um, in when these situations come. Mhm. Um I've noticed that during my moments of rut I was trying to find those like you know habits yoga meditation and mm-hmm. going across several apps all these apps tell you that hey you're going to be stressed you're about to be uh, anxious you're about to go through this certain period of um anxiety stress you need to just do something about it like here use our app and I just never want to accept that because I was like don't tell me that I'm ex- I'm uh, stressed and uh, anxious or whatever it is like, I just don't, don't want to be in that category because either you call it male pakistani uh, machism or whatever you want to call it but i just don't want to accept it as like many you asa like don't tell me that i'm stressed or anxious mm. even though i knew at many points in my life i've always been mm. um so i thought like you know why is there a label for everything why can't i just be like you know what here is curated content which will help you get out of your moments of rut or even if you're not in a rut and you're in a moment of high like happiness or whatever we have content and actions for that as well but so tell me about the the, the app itself like yeah. in terms of function are you When you say curated content you mean like there'll be a playlist of different like tracks yeah. and podcasts or like videos and stuff So how it works is you take a personality test in mm-hmm. the beginning of like when you uh download the app mm-hmm. uh once you've downloaded the app you take a personality test you move into the next stage which is uh your profile is registered mm-hmm. After that you get a mood board Yeah um it's obviously in the ideation phase so not sure if this is the right approach but for the prototype it's more like choose your mood happy sad anxious nervous or clueless the five basic ones mm-hmm. and after that choose a severity scale how severe of that mood are you feeling if you're happy are you extremely happy or just mild happy if you're sad are you are you like just sad or are you urgent level urgent sing level sad mm. kind of thing right so <laughs> Once you select the severity you move into the next stage which is choosing the main forms of empowerment mm. which is action so like as i mentioned when what made me feel great was feeding someone a meal yeah calling someone and help and like just talking to them so an action is something which is initiates you to do something mm. and then on the flip side you get educate which is a form of content mm. where we're in a content heavy uh world today so mm-hmm. not everyone wants to do an action all the time So let's just give them a dose of content because we consume that so much in our lives. We get overwhelmed by it. We're in this social media noise. So how can we actually make it like more productive or more like tailored to that personality itself? So the user has to choose either one, and then you have an accountability after that whether you complete the action or education content or not. And you get a report generated each day, week, month, and year. Um, now the one of the biggest components that I added towards that entire process is the ability to have a social circle in it. 
Okay. Now, of course, a social element is key because we as humans want to have a pack around us. It's very important for our development and our growth. So it's like I keep tabs on you, you keep tabs on me. Yes. So I've noticed that my friends have gone through a lot in life. Mm-hmm. Right. There have been some who've gone through very severe stuff, some mild stuff. But regardless, if I had known, I would have done something. Mm. But having that conversation is the toughest part. Mm. Like, I'm sure you've had instances in your life where you've maybe had moments like, shit, nothing's going right. I'm stressed, anxious, or maybe some di- severe stuff as well. Mm-hmm. I would not have known because you and I compete different geographical areas. Mm. You'd be like, you know what? busy hoga. busy. Hmm. Same to me is like, abhi hoga, chai hoga, chai hoga. for hmm. me, it's like, that's it. Like that's, that's what the circuit of life came to be. You know, the touch that we had with each other was hmm. just like, just keep tabs on each other's social media stories. It's like, okay, Asa to ye kar hai, pretty good. Asa is doing a podcast, but is Asa actually happy? Okay. Yeah. Like, is he good? Does he need any like pushing this motivation, anything like that, or just a friend to talk to? Mm-hmm. And I'd be like, I would just know that you know, Asa is fine. This guy's mm-hmm. podcast is very chilling. Kar hai. Like, you know, Asa is doing great things. <laughs> kind of thing. Like, you know, you just assume as a friend. Yeah. Uh, but you don't really know what maybe Asa might be feeling. Yeah. So this transparent circle from the, from the, to move yourself away from the noise of social media is what I wanted to create. But you're, all, it's, that's a very interesting insight to tap into because yeah. you're then um, encouraging people to be even more vulnerable than they would like to be. Exactly. So, and I and I know that how crazy that sounds. Like we, I don't think it's crazy. Yeah? I think it's okay. quite. I think it's pretty cool because the same way, like you have when you have an, when you buy an Apple Watch, yeah. the first thing people want to do is, you know, whoever else has an Apple Watch, like share your. Um, I know that how crazy that sounds. Like we, I don't think it's crazy. Yeah? I think it's okay. quite. I think it's pretty cool because the same way, like you have when you have an, when you buy an Apple Watch, yeah. the first thing people want to do is. You know, whoever else has an Apple Watch, like share your um, data. Yeah, share data with Right? Them. Um, and as to how many calories burned, how many work hard. So it's, it's, a, it's a community, it's a movement, it's right? A, yeah. And that's, I like that because it's, that's actually what I feel is, is missing, or that this is also another step in some form of communication. Absolutely. So everything has been on this. Exactly. So why so, can't there be an additional uh, tool, uh, which literally makes it much easier for you to stay in touch? Which makes it truer. It makes it truer, more yeah. authentic. So that's what was lacking in my life because I come from a very like, um, I would say, um, a typical Pakistani mindset family where us brothers won't really like be as transparent with each other. You won't share. You won't share. And that's fine. Like, you know, but if I respect with that, like, yeah. and oftentimes my life would be gone hidden away from them. Uh-huh. Um, but somehow they always know. They know yeah. what they say, right? Yeah. Like, you know, it's like, okay, what? Ho jayega, jo bhi. Yeah. But there were moments where I wanted to share things and I just yeah. couldn't because I was like, you know what? They've never done that and I've never had that outlet too. So let's just mm-hmm. suck it away. Yeah. Um, obviously, this app wasn't created so that I can get them on the platform and be like, you know what? Share your mood. But it's more like, no, I'm, I need you guys to see how I'm feeling. I'll have lows, I'll have highs and I'm a more of a sensitive person, emotional person. So like, just like keep tabs on me. Maybe you don't need it. Maybe you do, you just don't know as yet because you just haven't had that bit, like outlet to channel that energy towards this specific thing in your life. So for me, it was more like creating that space where the conversation, initiation of that conversation needs to be removed and made more easily available for us to at least know mm. how the person is. There's some questions that I have about this, yeah. which I'll get into after this. Yeah. So because they are, there's an element of behavior psychology also that I see coming in. And that's, that's one of the struggles of this business for now, which, yeah, which I'm happy to tell you about. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm a economics graduate. Yeah. As someone who has no idea about behavior psychology. Yeah. Uh, I had a, an interest towards it. Uh, I did take a psych 101 course, which mm. obviously doesn't make me qualified enough to build an app, which is tailored towards research. Yeah. Um, my business partner, Essence, also not, uh, he's a an accounting with- graduate, he's a business graduate actually. So both of us like, you know, cut her business the mouth, like uh-huh. us product banana, business karna hai, business. Business. <laughs> yeah, dhanda karna hai, basically. But at the end of the day, it's also something we want we faced as a problem, uh-huh. which I personally faced. And when I told him, he related to it. Hmm. And many other people did. Um so for me it was more like product to gaya, problem gaya. People have said that this is a problem. I haven't told them the solution fully. Some people I did, and it's like, you know, that's interesting. Like I'll use it, but no one really has the hook towards it because I don't have the backing of research on it. Speaking now, of hook, can you pass me that? 
There's a book, there's that book over there called Hook. Oh, Hooked, yeah. Have you read it? I've read it. I've read half of it, not the full. You need to read the whole yeah. thing, by the way. And it's interesting because it's like this dude has just broken down the entire... Um, near Ayal, okay. Near yeah. I, the, he's, he's broken down the entire uh, rationale behind why some apps are more successful than yeah. others. And in your case... This is this literally is the, the framework. Yeah. I, I don't know why I stopped reading it, but I think I'm going to get back to it. No, you need to pick it up, man. Yeah, I will do that for sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I think one of the... So one thing that I learned in the process that you mentioned, right? Like why, how can I make this successful is obviously research-backed. Hmm. Uh, many of the major successful applications in the health and wellness space are primarily research-backed. And they have to be in hmm. order to be successful because people need to trust it, right? Hmm. Um, now, being business background people, we obviously don't, we can't go back into university and be like, you know what, let's study psych, let's study behavioral science again. Um, and uh, let's get degrees, then undergrad, go to PhD, go to master's, go to PhD, go like there's so much studying to become a certified person. Hmm. So one really, really smart woman uh, who is also my advisor said, don't don't like learn way too many things like you know just be good at what you're good at and delegate the rest hmm. so hiring those people as volunteers initially and obviously keeping them now as uh, employees of the company hmm. um we are we had those like people from psychology backgrounds who are pursuing education in the field and are also practicing mm -hmm. uh within this field so they're helping us do our research mm -hmm. and then obviously now it's like partnering up with some organizations mm -hmm. who already have a huge supply of researchers so i'm in uh, conversations with some organizations and it's going to be really fruitful very soon that we are going to have a lot of researchers doing verified research for the application that you know what as soon as we have the next set of the application available mm -hmm. we're, sh we're confident that people can trust it that whatever we have like because the biggest challenges that we face is like how is our app inclusive? Like actions, yeah. for example, if Asad goes through a, uh, an injury and he can't walk for a, uh, for a certain period of time. You don't want to say go for a run. Yeah, I can't say go for a run because it cleans your mind. Yeah. It's like, that's literally, that's like going against inclusivity, right? Yeah. Um, and in Canada, especially, you will get sued for that. Yeah. Or oh, an actually face fines. And if something severe happens that us, like the, the user is someone from a, an illness hmm. and commits some kind of, um, in danger uh, like a, a something Self which is yeah, yeah something which is like bad for them mm -hmm. i could get uh, sued go to jail or whatever mm -hmm. and my business can shut down so it's it's a very tricky business to be in um but what i'm trying to promote is that i'm not a cure for mental mental health or illness mm -hmm. i'm just a tool to help you get out of your rut mm -hmm. because i as a 25 year old hardworking, energetic person faces that mm -hmm. and this is the problem that majority of the of like I would say the millennials and the Gen Z's faced hmm. this constant buzzing of the mind, which tells you like you know what, you gotta do something, you gotta be on the move. But it's like you're actually not being super productive. You're going yeah. through this cycle of life where it's like either be at your dead ass job, or if you, even if you are happy at your job, then you can't really do other things. Your passions and your hobbies are just not being met. Hmm. You're going through dating fatigue. You're going through like this like oh shit, I have to get married. I have to go through this. Where it's a very expensive time to live in. So like even the things that your parents did at this age. Get married, have kids, get the house, get the... Those bills. are, uh, those, those like are luxury, gone. You know, yeah. So we go through a lot of stress as it is, right? It, it's not as visible because we're all this in this very like mm -hmm. artificial world right now. Yeah. So this app is to just be more transparent, yeah. be more authentic. Um, there's no guarantee for its success. Yeah. But I think the passion that I have to solve this problem for myself, yeah. which helped me in many instances, I still face those ruts. Mm. And sometimes when I go to my app and I'm like, what should I do? I get a very bizarre thing to do. I'm like, yeah, this is not it. I have to improve my app. Yeah. So like I'm in those stages where I'm like refine the idea further. Uh -huh. um, I I have a good team of people to be able to work with. Yeah. I have had good response so far. Uh -huh. I recently hired, not hired, I would say like it's, we're almost in the conversation of finalizing our CTO, a very experienced individual. So we're really confident that now we have a solid, solid team. As soon as that research team comes on board, we are going to be on track to create a great and app. still bootstrapped. Sorry? Still bootstrapped. Still bootstrapped, but um, now that we have a technical person on board, huh. uh, we finally have the credibility to go to angel investors okay. and VCs to be asking for funding because that's the missing component. Would this classify as seed or like just pre-seed? Pre-seed. Pre pre because we still haven't tested the product in the market fully. 
Okay. So your first product goes on the market. That's when you raise, like before that you raise pre-seed. And then after that, as your user base increases, investors are more likely to invest in your business. Mm-hmm. Seed A, seed B, seed C, then you keep on going up. Okay. Yeah. Fair, fair. So because I think, you know, you didn't hit it in 20. Sorry. I, I didn't want to. Though. Okay, ah, I, like, want I like that. Um, but let's just skim through yeah. some things, some parts of your life, which I'm still curious to know about. Tell me, Briefly about Kanani Development, what's going on over there? Modern Age Family Business. It is. Honestly, like it's um it's it's a very exciting venture that my brother started in 2015, 16. I, I would say 16, uh, to be honest, because before that he was also he's so my oldest brother is also very i I'm very similar to him, in better words. Um he is also not the most studious person. He's always but been a person. very entrepreneurial. Yes. He mm. he's one of the biggest uh, I would say motivations for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, that I look up to because um, he started something in a very, it's a very traditional form of business, real estate and developments. Now, my, my family does had no experience in it. Um, so how does a person raise funds, raise uh, like a team of people to be able to build a house mm-hmm. first? He quit his job in 2015 to be able to then um, uh, move into a car, like work at a company which was doing developments and construction. Learned the trade for a year and a half there, uh, quit to start his own renovations business. Uh, where he was just like a small contractor who had like one or two people working with him that, you know, Mm -hmm. just give me a contract, I'll help you build, renovate your basement and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that allowed him to like know more about the trade, find the cheapest or more more skillful people in labors. Mm -hmm. And eventually in 2017, uh, he had a breakthrough moment where he was like, you know, I have a good team. There's a contract available. I should try to move into developments. Mm -hmm. And uh, God gave him the courage. He he took a leap of faith. Obviously, I had to convince my dad. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what? Dad, I need to make this move. It is obviously a very capital in- intensive work. Mm-hmm. I will need your support. And of course, like, it's a blessing to have your father, like, push you to the limits. It's like, you know what? It's mm-hmm. good. It's going to help us grow as well. So yeah. here you go. Let's do it. He managed to pull it through. Uh, and I think it kickstarted the journey that, you know what? Kanani Developments was born. Um, it's to this day, like people think it's my business, which is great. Like it's a, it's a good thing to have. Like people thinking that, you know what, you're building great houses, bro. Congrats. My, my old uh, colleagues from Deloitte, they're like, you know what, oh, buddy, you're building great houses, great venture. I'm like, that's not really my venture that I'm working on, but I do support it. Yeah. So I do, I do help, uh, through, uh, of the entire marketing and operations is under me. Sweet. Um, so my older brother, the oldest one, Bilal, he manages obviously the main company. Uh, my other brother Zubair recently quit his job as well mm. to be able to jump into the family business as well, uh, handling the entire finance side and eventually bridging it towards a further um, stream of business as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's like it's good to have like family with you working on the same cause. Mm. Um, there's a passion towards it because it's like you know what we all follow a similar path of quitting jobs now. Mm. It's like what are we going to make out of this? Mm. It's um you are obviously going through struggles where like, you know what, how will you make, make your home, uh, meet your home expenses? How will you do mm. this? How will you do that? But it's like when you have support around you, it happens. It hap- It just, it works out. It Tons works of out. fights though, I'm sure. Tons of fights. I don't have that many fights because I have other things that I'm focused on more. Yeah. Uh, wherever they need help because I'm, I've built expertise in so many different areas. They utilize my, my, my help and my service wherever they need, mm. uh, specifically towards marketing operations. So that's something I handle for them. Mm. Um, no fights with me, just deadlines. Yeah. So <laughs> just deadlines is a thing because as you know, like, you know, when you're working in, um, when you're working a couple of things together, or even like in marketing, like when you're trying to outsource work or you're trying to get someone to do something, because I'm not the most creative person in terms mm-hmm. of like maybe editing or uh, creating content, but I have like some kind of vision that I try to project to the people who help me build it. Mm-hmm. And motivating them to finish on time is also a skill. And I think I'm slowly getting better and better at it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's something I uh, utilize, uh, I would say my skills in the family business for. Sweet. Yeah. Sweet. So, uh, Starting to wrap up with this conversation, yeah, yeah. and one one thing I'm actually very curious to know about is that during the lockdown, what do you feel were some very key lessons that you learned? Oh man, so many lessons. Um, the best lesson, I would say, as as like generic as it sounds, maybe many people have mentioned that is um, you can't predict the future, hmm. right? But you can shape it up. Is what I learned. Right, because um, in the pandemic year is, it's been the most transforming 
part of my life yeah. where I've done so many cool things mm. in this year, in this 12 months, I've done insanely cool things, which I categorize as cool. Mm, yeah. Some people do as well. Some guys like, you know, that's too much stuff or some guys like, it's, it's okay. Say yeah, matlab. Take it, take it. Take it. But I feel like I've done some really like life-changing things in my uh, last 12 months from starting off to um, ideating on my app. Mm. To then venturing out uh, to restart my old venture in strategy and cons- uh, implementation consulting, whatever I did at um, let's say the bank and Deloitte, I was like, you know what, I did it for the big dogs. Let's do it for the medium and small dogs. Mm. So restarting that practice, I so purpose that's path. The purpose path, yeah. So starting those two ventures, um, quitting my job, taking a cross country trip. So uh, a bunch of my friends and I drove four thousand, four and a half thousand miles uh, kilometers from the east end to the w- uh, west end. Really? Yeah, and it was it was an experience. Um, and I think that's where I had the moment. Like, you know what? The only way my ventures are going to be successful is if I quit my job. Yeah. It's like if I don't get that paycheck each like biweekly, mm. I'll probably find out how to make money. Mm. Because I feel like I've been so used to getting money every time. It's because you had to make yourself uncomfortable throughout yeah, the process. Yeah, like, uncomfortable is something which. Obviously, the pandemic made you super uncomfortable in so many things. Like even at your house, you're uncomfortable. It's like yeah. kaptak bato ghar mein. Yeah. Like when you're out, you're uncomfortable. It's like why is he not wearing a mask? So like we're more uncomfortable than ever. Yeah. It's like we're now more aware about what uncomfortableness is. Hmm. Koi cheek maar le side mein to like uncomfortable. Koi kuch bol do uncomfortable. Like everyone's become really sensitive now. Yeah. So that means uncomfortableness is the key player in driving you to the good or bad. So I think yeah. I was able to take advantage of the uncomfortableness hmm. as what I think it is because. Um, I was able to do so many things in the last year up until I would say even trying to like diminish my le- number of distractions. Hmm. So like not using as much social media to be able to focus on with the ventures after quitting my job is like, hmm. if I'm more out there on social media at that point, as I've also quit my job, the expectations I'm setting for myself. Hmm. It's like, it's the job truly. Let me ask what he's up to. Like hmm. people would ask you more because, and you're not even successful as yet in your own ventures. Yeah. Like don't set yourself the expectations. So like understanding that as well, जब तक कुछ हो नहीं जाए जब तक लाइक डोंट टेल एनी वन वट टू डू और वट यूर डूइंग सो दो थिंग्स आई लर्न इन द पेंडेमिक वैल्यूबल लेसन टू बी एबल टू एटलीस्ट गेट माई सेल्फ टू अ प्लेस वैन नाउ प्राउडली सेट नॉट आई डन समथिंग आफ्टर क्विटिंग माई जॉब फाइव एंड हाफ मंथ्स इन टू क्विटिंग आई हैव सस्टेन माई सेल्फ आई हैव स्टार्ट अ कपल ऑफ कूल थिंग्स आई एम वर्किंग ऑन अदर कपल ऑफ कूल थिंग्स आई वॉज एबल टू टेक अ ट्रिप इन द मिडल ऑफ अ पेंडेमिक Sit mm. across the table to you after many many years of thinking. Like you know, one day us and I is going to have a chat about this. Um, <laughs> I can yeah, like it's it's been a great twelve months. As as terrible it has been for the world, it's it's been a great twelve months for me. Nice yeah. man, tons of introspection. Tons of it, tons of it, man. Nice man. Yeah, great. Yeah, so uh, it's it's nice to hear that you know there's the, the it's shitty to hear also about yeah. like all the bad news as well that's happened in the world, but it's good to hear that. you figured out what the calling is yes that so just say this is like the present calling this is present this is the present calling this is yeah the yeah, calling it's a changes chapter, right yeah, yeah it's, it's a chapter right so yeah. i i've i've learned that the calling changes mm. right cuz aaj ye hoga kal kuch aur hoga mm. like this we're such like explorative creatures yeah ki bhai aaj ye pasand hai kal kuch aur pasand aa jayega so obviously try to limiting limit yourself from the number of like things that you want to jump into yeah. just so that you can focus on something at least get something to work yeah so the current calling is this and i think the pandemic really opened my eyes towards what my actual calling is going to be right now yeah to aage jo hoga dekha jayega but it's going to be right now wo bhi dekha jayega like what's in your control is in your control what's not is not yeah basically awesome yeah. so if you could go back in time you made like a 10 year old self 7 year old self yeah. what is it that you would say to him man um don't cry i'm not going to cry now i'm thinking man come on some more should i play some arjit singh um i would say one thing that i would tell myself 15 years um go i would tell him to just not be worried you know it's like that's one thing i always took up too much on myself like mm-hmm. i worry a lot yeah overthinking it's like overthinking does lead to a lot of failure for me is that mm-hmm. honest um there's a deliverable that ha- isn't happening let's let's worry a bit like you know let's panic a bit maybe i might find a solution but just never works this way yeah if you didn't get the job let's start worrying like you know just yeah. worry worry all the time through the maybe the kid would understand better 
Because <laughs> kids are generally supposed to be very relaxed people, right? They don't mm. get worried that easily. Yeah. Because you're really laid back when you're a kid. Uh-huh. Like you, life just goes by up until you hit your like maybe like late teens. Yeah. It's like you know, shit, life's hitting you now. Yeah. So maybe like taming myself back then is like you know, continue telling myself you know, let's just be more relaxed, be more calm about what's coming because things eventually fall into place. Like you know, mm. it's uh, it's not that there's a planner like higher power saying there's like trying to sh- mess shit up on you. It's like you know, it's He's out there looking for you as well. Yeah. And so are the people who you cultivate around you, the loved ones. Mm. They're actually going to be there to help you. Like, obviously, you have to give back love as well. It's not that you expect to just get the love. Yeah. Cultivate it. Find the right people to give the love to. And trust me, that works, man. Like yeah. Giving the right people the love and getting it back, mm. it pushes you to the next uh, chapter as well with mm. much, much greater, I would say, um, self-awareness, self-power as well. So that's something I would tell myself for that's sure. That's deep. It's kind of deep. Nice. Or I don't know you had it in you, man. I would also <laughs> tell myself, like, for your bachudi karlo, I mean, you know, uh-huh. <laughs> not that I've, yeah. I've done, I've done great uh, so far. Like, I've done whatever I want to check. Like, I would say, bucket list uh-huh. that you have as young teens. Like, ye karna, ye karna. I've done a lot of it, to be honest. Like, uh-huh. from the daring stuff to the solo traveling to the backpacking to like even just meeting new uh, people trying new experiences like i've done a lot of it hmm. so my bucket list isn't that like, i've kept it empty hmm. so it's like simultaneously make your life more interesting so mm-hmm. i would also tell myself to do more bachodi then like you know because like it's not guaranteed you you grow older and there's you feel like i don't want to miss out on the things that i had planned yeah so just start doing things already like if you're if you're worried about maybe not having enough money to do it hmm. push yourself to work yeah. Now it's if you have that habit of doing it, it's gonna come back to you. Like you attract the law of attraction. <laughs> you do bachodi, but you're gonna come to you. You spend money, <laughs> your money's gonna come to you. Like you know, it's 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 it works, man. It's worked for so long. <laughs> That's the <I'm>, first. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Right? Yeah. No. Cool, man. Cool, dude. I don't want the tagline to be bachodi karo, bachodi aayegi. <laughs> no, no. I was actually thinking the tagline would be babu ban gaya. <laughs> babu, yo. Dude. That. Just keep Babu Ban <laughs> Babu Ban yeah. yeah. Done. But Ahmed, man, thanks for coming on. Um, um, yeah. This was tons of fun, man. Yeah. This Honestly, this is... Uh, initially, I thought it was going to be a little, like, awkward. It's like, yeah. But it's therapeutic, it's isn't like, it? Yeah, like, I usually chat with you with not having a mic in the middle. And two people and two cameras and two lights. Yeah, <laughs> Too many twos. Too many twos. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this, is, this has been super, I would say, nice to chat with someone who knows... A good share of my life yeah but hasn't had the chance to know the details yeah and i'm glad i'm able to share this on this platform where you've already interviewed so many like cool people yeah and i uh, being on that list and maybe coming back soon on it fingers crossed man fingers crossed eventually yeah and uh yeah like uh, thank you man like i really appreciate the opportunity no man my pleasure and again like it's just about hearing stories at the yeah. end of the day we love stories man humans they follow yeah. stories man that's what yeah. um everything is a story uh-huh. everything is a story and uh so one more thing i would like to add is yeah. um i think one great aspect about my life that i'm slowly working on is my story mm. right um people let's say write biographies or people write articles about what they've achieved or what they've done not not just like the goods mm. but also the bads but like having that documented for myself yeah. to know and look back to to figure out what's missing what needs to be added in life so each time, like maybe um, over the last years I've done this, like I look back at that documentary that I'm making for myself. It's like, what wasn't right this year hmm. and is going to be right this year? Hmm. What's wrong that happened last year is going to be right this year. And what's the cool stuff that I need to do this year? Yeah. So one goal is, of course, to buy a bike, like a motorbike. Really? Yeah. So I'm, I'm planning to do that in summer uh, in Toronto. So fingers crossed. My parents said no. My parents have said no. Yeah. And my mom's not a podcast listener, so she doesn't know I'm going to get it. Okay. But uh, so don't share it across too much. <laughs> Unfortunately, my mom's heard them. So like, I'm kind of screwed. I can't <laughs> yeah, get you, it now. Yeah, man. Like, non Karachi though. Like, uh, yeah. I think uh, that's something my yeah. mom would definitely not let me do. Yeah. Uh, but in Toronto as well, like, I, I think I'm going to get it this win- uh, summer. Yeah. If it does, if you come there, um, I'll have uh, another yeah, helmet. Is well I'll have another helmet for you, man. Oh my Safety God. first. Done. All right. Nah, nah, but what you said about <laughs> the stories, brother, the yeah. way I'm documenting mine, though, is two ways. Yeah. This thing and Instagram. And not yeah. for the sake of others to read or see. For the sake of you. For the sake of myself. Yeah. It's like I know when, I, when, when a particular picture on Instagram went up or one of these videos comes up and if there's a break in between, yeah. I know what was going on in that break in between. I know what my headspace was like when that video That's came true. out. Okay. You know? 
and it's a good way to put it yeah and okay it doesn't necessarily have to be open for the public at the end of the day i don't also make this for others to consume yeah. they consume it if they like it i'm not holding anyone accountable to watch it but or hear it it's for you at the end it's of the for day. me because yeah. this is something that i also want to hear this is also something i need to hear for myself you know and then reflect and sit exactly. and think about and then act on anything that was worthwhile at the end of the day, all this data comes in my own like mental yeah. file cabinet <laughs> And when I want to use it, I'll pull out that <laughs> file, install it, and then, you know, let the show roll. But thanks again for coming on, man. This was fun. Um, that was Ahmed Khanani. That's not Justin Baldoni. Justin Baldoni, <laughs> right? But that's Ahmed Khanani, the brown Justin Baldoni. Um, <laughs> so do keep your eyes open for Empowered. And if you're in Canada and you'd like a property made near you, get in touch with Khanani Developments. Right Residential right. property. Commercial in the future. Yes. Uh, Phase eight, nee ek <laughs> Canada, ek ek, wo ek building khari kardi. No, it's Pani a, nahi aara, gas nahi aara. So a lot of cities there. It's a lot of cities there. Yeah, yeah. But um, this was fun. Till the next one, everybody. Take care. Peace out. Bye bye.